Let's get a closer look now with the swine flu vaccine supply and the HIV discovery. For that, we bring in Jeffrey Cross, veteran drug analyst and the founder and CEO of Crystal Research Associates. Welcome to you, Jeff. Good to be here. First, characterize on the HIV vaccine how big of a breakthrough this truly is. Well, the AIDS vax vaccine for Sanofi Adventus had failed in its clinical studies, so it was turned over to a consumer advocate group, if you will, to put it through. Uh, it's, it's helpful that it's helping prevent AIDS in some patients, 31.2%, but the problem was people who already had AIDS or were infected with the disease showed basically just as much progression with the disease as those people in placebo. So while it may work for a small group of the population, it may not work in Africa, it may not work in a lot of places where people have a high prevalence of the disease already. So how much further testing is needed and is the funding there to do that? A considerable amount of further testing is needed and what will be necessary is the governments to get involved since this has now been pulled out of a pharmaceutical company after failing its clinical study. The governments are going to have to get involved, spend a considerable amount of money. It is promising to have something that shows the first promise of a route to a vaccine, but 31% is a long way from being something commercially viable. Let me ask you, speaking of that 31%, I mean, how can you uh, uh, be sure that these test results are good? I mean, what were the parameters of the testing? A lot of the patients, for example, may have already been you HIV positive. Yeah, you can't. Um, there are 16,800 and some odd volunteers, and when you're volunteering for an AIDS, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's no end road here for a lot of these folks other than basically death. They don't have access to a lot of the medications that people have over over here to treat themselves further. So you, once again, will have to audit and very closely analyze what the results of the clinical tests actually were. 31% is, is a good start, you know, but there was a reason why this vaccine failed for Sanofi Adventus the first time, and it's not because Sanofi Adventus is stupid. So what we have to do is we have to take a look at the results, analyze it further, see where it works, make adjustments in the vaccine, and then take another application of another clinical so trial. So Sanofi teamed up with Vaxgen and had this success or limited success from an investment perspective, is it a reason to buy those shares? No, it's, it's not. Um, most of the rights were, were, were spun out to this group. So VaxGen had tried with Sanofi Aventis to do this, and then when it failed, a, a consumer group basically has this product now, and they are trying to do the best they can to try and come up with something viable. Certainly, uh, Sanofi, Aventis, and VaxGen were onto something. It'll be interesting to see whether they get back involved heavily to try and take this further. But the individuals won't be able to do it on their own. Okay, Jeff, we want to get an update also mm -hmm. on H1N1 otherwise known as swine flu from you, but we do have to take a quick break, so we'll sure. do that when we return. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. We are back in two minutes here on Bloomberg Television. Please stay with us on this. It's not yet Friday, is it? One more day. Thursday afternoon. And we are back with Jeff Cross, founder and CEO of Crystal Research Associates. He is a drug industry analyst. Thanks again, Jeff. It's great to see you. So let's wrap up our discussion on what they've, uh, the advancements they found toward an AIDS vaccine. It's mm -hmm. not quite there yet. And you were just telling us in the break that this is a long way off from having any kind of commercial viability here in the U.S. Oh, yes. You're, you're looking at five, ten years minimum to have commercial viability here. Working in 31 percent of the patients, and you don't really know the controls because it was done in, an over, in another country and not the strictest regimen, you're going to have to run another big study of 16,000 people. It's going to be very expensive. It's working in showing promise in 31% in this particular mutation. Who knows about the others? Right, it's you a long just way. explain to us how elusive the AIDS virus is. AIDS HIV. viruses and cancer, they, they change and they mutate and they hide, and that's why medications have only been. Uh, uh, I guess, making positive strides towards delaying the eventual. You, you, you can't eradicate it. And I think trying to come up with a vaccine that will eradicate, eradicate every type of AIDS is not going not gonna to happen. And the idea behind a vaccine is that you actually don't get the disease Correct. after you take it, right? I mean, a polio vaccine or a TB vaccine, Correct. hopefully it doesn't, you, you never you get that. You wouldn't get AIDS. And I don't, I don't, we're, we're a long way from being there. And I think some of the results, some of the mixed results in this particular study, which showed that people who had the vaccine, it didn't slow the progression of the vaccine at all. I think we're a long way off from having this be a commercial viability. You're, you're talking a long time. What could be more promising, though definitely not as serious, is H1N1. Uh, the World Health Organization reporting manufacturers can only, though, produce 3 billion doses of vaccine each year, less than the 5 billion initial estimates. Is that going to be a big problem? Well, it, I don't think it'll be, a, it, it'll be a big problem if we have a huge pandemic breakout. If we don't have a pandemic breakout, it should help in systeming the, the recurrence of the virus, if you will, because when you get it spreading in close confines, and as we're coming into fall, winter here, it could be something that becomes an issue. You've got right now medical immune and you've got Novartis uh, as to, and Sanofi as, as people who are approved to produce doses. 
about 300 million doses will be released in October. It's about four weeks from now. I would caution people that if you don't really need to have the vaccine, if you're not frail, if you're not of like de deteriorated health, not to get it. My the, pediatrician actually recommended to really think hard about whether or not to give my young children this yeah. vaccine. What, you were describing some of the there were issues. Happened. There were some issues that have happened before with flu, the influenza vaccines that came out initially that were the first ones to come on the market, and there were children who got paralyzed. There were I mean, there were a lot scary. of losses. It is. It is, and that's why you don't want to be the first one going. You don't want to buy the car that's made on the, on, on Monday. And you don't want to be the first one going to test the vaccine. Once it's injected into your body, there's no taking it back. Companies that could be very interesting in this area, smaller companies, CellSci is using its Leap technology, C E L S C I, using its Leap technology. That company has a lot of promise for producing new and differentiated vaccines. Generex Biotechnology, a small company in Canada, excellent company using synthetics, not the egg grown. So they, if a pandemic does break out, they can possibly produce one faster. Yes, it's a year or two for market, but they're going into clinical trials now. Both those companies could be interesting. And uh, Unilife has got a needle, a retractable needle, which uh, you know will help people from getting sick after they get the vaccine. So we own those companies, we like those companies, and they're good little companies that are going to help supplement what the big pharma companies do, are doing. Do, do these flu vaccines, I mean, are these blockbusters or not? No. Uh, they're not blockbusters because just like, you remember when you had the, you had the Asian flu, you had the, the avian flu sure. vaccine, um, which some companies are still working on because that's still an issue. Now you, you have the swine flu. I mean, people still haven't adjusted to the fact that you can't get swine flu by eating pork. It's killed the, killed the pork industry, but you can't get it by eating pork. So is the next one going to be, you know, the the horse or the cow or the chicken? I mean, it, flu continues to, to uh, mutate. And that's the other thing important to mention. People get the flu vaccine every year. It's and some people still get year. the flu. It's different every year. Yeah. It's a different titer. So here's the story. So then if you're thinking about getting H1N1 vaccine, this is for consumers. Is it better to sit on the sidelines and wait to wait. see what kind of... Or, you know, if you're in if you're situations... You need, if you're elderly and, and you need And I heard pregnant women, be. too, are, are at higher risk. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you that uh, if my wife was pregnant, I would not recommend that she gets it. I would just recommend that she's very careful and washes her hands and you know is very diligent because you really this is the first okay. one coming out. You just don't want to take a chance if it okay. goes wrong. It, you know, Jeffrey Cross, we have to leave it there. Commercial breaks coming up, but you gave us a lot of good info today, so we right. appreciate that. You're welcome.